Hi, everyone. Hello again. In the previous segment, Sapphir, Adolf Sapphir, the Divine Unity of Scripture, Sapphir has been dwelling on the misunderstanding of the purpose of the law by the Jewish people of, of mm-hmm. Christ's day. They really did think that they could get into the kingdom of God by obeying the law, being faithful mm-hmm. to their God. And Christ flatly contradicted this, of course, in the famous sayings of John 3, where he's in dialogue with Nicodemus, who's mm-hmm. a secret disciple, one of the Sanhedrin, one of the teachers of Israel. And Christ has to say to him, do you not know this, Nicodemus? You must be born again. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. I say to you, you must be born again, which he says even more explicitly, you cannot see, i.e. understand the kingdom of God, and you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you be born again. Mm-hmm. The watchtower flatly contradicts this and says this is not for Jehovah's Witnesses, it's only for the elect, the elite. Mm. And, so, yet, and yet you, in later in John, he says, if you don't partake in the body of Christ, you're, you have no life in you, right? You eat you, my flesh and you drink my blood or you have no life in you? Is that a fair paraphrase? Yeah. So where does that leave most Jehovah's Witnesses? Dead forever. Yeah. So Sapphir goes on about the purpose of the law. This is the law that God gave, and like God, there is nothing to compare with it. Oh, that it were taught in all our families. He's saying this 130 years ago. Oh, that it was taught in all our families. Oh, that it were taught in our, all our schools. We know what's happened to the Bible mm-hmm. in our mm-hmm. schools since Sapphir's day. And that it were taught everywhere, where there are human beings walking upon the face of the earth, for the law is spiritual. Moses sums up the law, and Jesus sums up the law, but Jesus makes one beautiful reflection. He says, the first commandment must necessarily be love to God. The other is second, but he does not like to put it even second, because if it is second, it might be separated, perhaps from the first. Jesus Christ is so anxious to show that the first table of the law and the second table of the law are inseparably connected that he says the other is second, but like unto it. Mm. And the whole first epistle of John is only an exposition of this, that love to God and love to man go hand in hand together, not as Cain was, who hated his brother Abel. And wherefore did he hate him? Because he hated God. For if he had loved God, he would have loved Abel also. Mm. But take a higher view of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, as I have said, were the face of the law, the countenance of the law. But I am bold enough to say that the Ten Commandments are the very countenance of God himself. God is spirit. Thou shalt not make thyself any graven image. Thou shalt hallow the name of God. God is light and truth. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Thou shalt not covet and the hallowing of the name of God corresponds also with this, that God is light and God is truth. And lastly, God is love. And what is the second table of the law but this, that God is the father of the large family, and that the children are to love one another and to treat one another according to the character of God himself. And therefore, when our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, has spoken of the righteousness, there is no other righteousness but that righteousness, which is described in the Ten Commandments. When he dwelt upon the various commandments, as Moses with the three elders that ascended up on high, even above the clouds and darkness of the mount, and saw the God of Israel and the blue under his feet, and as the lark which soars up, higher with her thrilling melody so jesus christ says unto us what is this law but that ye may be children of your father which is in heaven it is the image of the father that you ought to see in this law be ye therefore merciful and generous as your father is merciful and generous and be ye perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect 
This was the law which God gave to his people. But as the Lord was holy, just, and good, and as Israel was sinful and guilty and polluted under the sentence of death, how was it possible, what was the method by which it was possible, that there should be communion between God and the people? And yet God, because he is holy, wishes to draw this people into close communion with himself. I will dwell in the midst of them. I will be their God. I will dwell with them, and they shall dwell in me. He wished to marry them. He wished to become one with them, to become one with them. Mm. So is this being offered to Jehovah's Witnesses? This no. personal communion, God dwelling not just among them, but in them, no. John 14 to 16. No, it's denied also. Uh, the heritage of all Christians is therefore taken away from mm -hmm. all the people we yeah. once thought were God's people. What a contradiction is there here. God says, then I will be merciful. I will forgive all your sins, all your sins. I will bring you near to myself. And God forgives sins in such a way that he is the Holy One and that nothing of what he has said against sin is cancelled, and that the connection between sin and the wrath of God, and sin and death, and the curse, is only made clearer. Therefore he gives to Israel the sacrifices. Without shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. God is a just God, and yet the justifier of the guilty. The feeling of the sinfulness of guilt and pollution is only deepened in the hearts of Israel, who receive the forgiveness of sin. Observe the language of the 51st Psalm. David had nothing but the law of Moses to teach him the 51st Psalm. And in this 51st Psalm, he says, Have mercy upon me according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out all my iniquities, for my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, that thou mightest be justified when thou judgest. And not merely have I sinned, but I am altogether a mass of sin. My whole existence is sin. I was shapen in iniquity. The law had impressed upon him the third chapter of Genesis, that we are ruined in the fall of Adam and inherit this guilt which separates us from God. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. And of course, the hyssop becomes a type of the blood of Christ. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow the divine righteousness which is imputed to us. Mm. So you see, the law did what God meant it to do. And lest Israel should imagine that God forgives sins, but that we must do our part and sanctify ourselves unto the Lord, lest there should be any such idea of cooperation in the mind of Israel, any such conditional salvation, Oh, how was Israel continually taught, I, even I, am he that sanctifies thee. For how can you explain in the Psalms the constant cry which rose out of Israel, Incline my heart to keep thy commandments? Then the heart was not inclined to keep the commandments of God. Read the 119th Psalm, and if there be any... Pelagianism, Pelagianism or Arminianism in you, it will be rooted up by the grace of God. Now, although you often read in the Old Testament, sanctify yourselves, that has only reference to this ceremonial cleansing and to outward bodily preparations for coming near to God. In the New Testament, you never read about sanctifying yourself. For Christ is our sanctification, who, is, who by his blood has transplanted us out of the region of sin and death and brought us in, into the region of righteousness and life by God's electing love, by the power of the blood of, of Jesus and through the application of the Holy Ghost all which was shown in the law which God gave to Israel. Therefore God appointed holy persons, priests, and holy places where he could 
where he would reveal himself and give to Israel his gifts and enable Israel to bring to him their gifts to the tabernacle. And, his appo- and he appointed holy, time, holy times, festivals, in which all the various component parts of the divine dealings in redemption are broken up, as it were, into fragments, that they may be taught one aspect after another. Oh, it was a wonderful, merciful dispensation. So that reminds me that we're, we, don't, we, we didn't just have a shallow view of the kingdom when we thought we could enter into it by our own exertions as witnesses, mm-hmm. as the Jews in the first century misunderstood the law. But we also had a shallow view of how God works in life after we become believers, which is the sanctification is His. It's His. It's not us trying harder mm-hmm. because of some, well, uh, some thankfulness for what he's done it's not just trying to live up to the forgiveness we feel it's actually God working in us so I'm thinking of what he says here about God sanctifying us he is the one who sanctifies but also Mm -hmm. remember the text in Philippians 2 where I think it's verse 13 where he says that God is the one both working in us he's working in us both to will and to and to work yeah. So even the will to do the right thing is coming from God through the Holy Spirit, which mm-hmm. is why you have to be born again. Otherwise, yeah. it's all you. Yeah, and you can't accomplish it. Look at David, who's a man of God, and he's he's full of regret and says, I'm full of sin, and has to go to God. So he asks that God incline his heart. Yeah. Gee, is, we somehow view that as God getting in the way of our free will. Mm. No. Thank goodness if he does. <laughs> Thank goodness God does, does get in the way of our free will. Yeah. He says, I must pass over this to say only one thing. With all its beauty, with all its glory, with all its loving kindness, the law was a failure. It made nothing perfect. The people of Israel felt that all these were shadows. They all knew that the blood of beasts could not take away sins. They all knew that the sacrifices had to be repeated continually. They all knew that the Day of Atonement was only for one year, starting them, as it were, again, so that the communion between God and Israel might be kept up for another year. Therefore, under the Old Testament, as the Apostle teaches us in the Hebrews, the conscience was not made perfect concerning sin, and the forgiveness which they had was, so to speak, only through the patience and forbearance of God, waiting, as the Apostle says in the third chapter of the Epistle to the Romans, until the blood, the real blood, of Jesus Christ was brought into the Holy of Holies. The law made nothing perfect, and although the righteousness was not perfectly revealed and appropriated under the law, yet all who believed were accepted of God and beloved. So God, in the strict sense of the word, was not yet revealed in the Holy of Holies, where there was darkness, for God dwelleth in light unapproachable, and the very excess of that light makes it unapproachable and the very excess of that light makes it darkness to man to man that is sinful man into that holy of holies the priests could not go the levites could not go the people could not go and the high priest could go only once a year the holy ghost thus signifying that the way into the holy of holies had not been made manifest well might philip say to our blessed jesus show us the father and it sufficeth us. That was the desire of Israel during all the preceding years. And Jesus said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And the true tabernacle, the eternal sanctuary of God, is above. And thus we read, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus Christ the righteous. So I I think it's uh, a matter of... uh of the law, what it achieved was make them aware they needed more than a law. That that wasn't going to do it. It brought them to the point of birth. Mm-hmm. But the mistake is that when you think... That you somehow can you keep can, going without birth. You can depend on your mother's umb- umbilical cord forever. Yeah. You miss the purpose of the law, which is a tutor. Yeah. So that was the womb. It was the, the preparation 
the nourishment of the people was received during the period of the law. They were learning the ways of God, but they couldn't keep them. Yeah. They had to be born. They had to be born. Yeah. They had to be born again, as Christ said to Nicodemus. They had to leave the womb, or the womb would become the tomb. Yeah. And there was a third thing that was not given by the law. That was the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. For as the Apostle Paul says, if life could have been given by the law, it would have been necess- it would not have been necessary for Jesus Christ to come and to die. There they were in spiritual no, I'll say that again. They were in the spirit of bondage, in the spirit of little children, who were now under tutors and governors. But unto all who believe in Jesus there is given the Holy Ghost as the indwelling Spirit and Comforter. Therefore in them is fulfilled the righteousness of the law, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And to conclude what applies to the law in order to obtain righteousness, or the knowledge of God, or the profession of, or the possession of the Holy Ghost, applies to everything else in connection with Israel. For what the law could not do in that it was weakened through the flesh, God himself must do. Where is the land which God gave unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Is it not trodden down under foot of the Gentiles? And has not God promised it to them? And has not God given to them this law on purpose that they might enjoy the land and that he would make it fruitful and lovely land where every man could sit under his own fig tree and rejoice in the bounty of the Lord his God they have not got it why have they not got it what the law could not do in that it was weakened through the flesh must be left to Jesus to accomplish mm. And so, as to the whole history of the Old Testament, you may write upon it that it is a failure because it was weakened through the flesh. But you may write upon it that it is yea and amen in Christ Jesus, who is the Alpha and Omega, the root and the offspring of David, the son of Abraham, and yet the I am before Abraham. Oh, that the Lord would hasten the day when there will be no agnostics, but when all flesh shall know that I am the Lord, where the glory transcendent of the new covenant will show us the faithfulness and grace of God manifested in Israel. Amen. Amen. So to continue the analogy of the womb Mm -hmm. and tomb, the watchtower, like all cults, wants to keep us dependent on itself Mm -hmm. it even uses the analogy of mother but if you think of it in terms of the child not wanting to come out of the womb well that's the condition they've put you in where you think you're perpetually dependent upon for life even the life in the umbilical cord for life you need them whereas the truth is if you never emerge from the womb and become born again you never see the father you never know your father you can only know him through Christ, not through the law. It's a very good analogy because a, a child, Max was one of them, who didn't want to come out. He was quite content where he was. And I'm sure if you're, if you're a child in, in a womb, that it seems like a, a safe place uh, and you're getting nourishment and you're content and you're happy. But if you stayed there, you would die. The baby has to be born, or it will die. And Christ is explicit about it. You must be born again. You must Mm -hmm. be born again to see the kingdom of God. You must eat my flesh, drink my my blood to have life in you. Mm -hmm. Something's got to change. And the watchtower, in effect, has said, no, nothing has to change. You just trust us. So they're making the same mistake as Israel did in thinking that somehow they had the law and that was enough. And if they could only just keep it, that somehow that was a possibility. Yeah. And they, they have put their people in this position where Je- they never will be born. They'll never be born. 
they don't think they have to be. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this idea that all that's lost is just the life that Adam and Eve had, again, another conceit you got from the Watchtower. Mm -hmm. What you need is to be glorified. You need to have the glorified body and human existence that Christ now has is for all Christians. Mm -hmm. And that's not part of your, of what you're being told. Yeah, by and the watchtower. You'll never see the Father, like you said before. Yeah, you'll never see the Father. You won't even see the Son. Yeah. Yeah. So the link is, I can't read. Mm. Christ brought life and immortality to light, yet millions prefer old light. And then it's got E.G. Ecclesiastes. <laughs> yeah. The. The book of Ecclesiastes was not designed to tell us about life after death, but mm -hmm. that's the first, that's the default text, right, when you're thinking about for it. For witnesses, for sure, yeah. See you next time. See you soon.